All right, welcome to the corner tonight. What you see in front of you, I know is a little bit different from my room. I do build mostly hot rods and customs, but I'm also a big rig builder as well. Um, this was kind of a roundabout story. A buddy of mine, had, or a friend of guy, a guy you know, on, on one of the model car forums that I'm on, had some semis that he was looking to trade and get rid of. So I kind of struck a deal up with him and got, I think, three or four of them sent out to me. I forget how many I got from them. But this auto car DC 9964B model dump truck auto car was in with all the kits. When I got it from him, it had an extra cab, extra hood, a few other extra little oddities in it. And I got to thinking, I didn't know what to do with it. At the same point, another guy needed um, a dump truck body, so I ended up letting the dump body go to this other guy. He took it and added it to one of his trucks and uh, went from there. But So I had this as just a straight frame, straight truck. Didn't have anything on it other than what you see here, basically. So what I ended up doing is I took the truck and started building it. Yeah, well, I wanted to build a logger. And I didn't like, well, I, it's not a bad kit. The AMT logger trailer isn't a bad kit. I like the kit. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to do something that was a little bit more true to form to what the older logging trailers were. Something that would fit the auto car a little bit better than the AMT trailer. And I wanted it to be a little bit more articulating than what the AMT kit offered. So the trailer on this is almost 100%. Well, it's about maybe... 85 90 ish percent scratch built everything that you see on there other than the tires wheels axles and springs and the air tank are all made out of evergreen plastic or brass tubing or what have you we'll break it down here in a minute i'm gonna get the trailer off there but this is how you would see the logging trailers if they're going long dist long distance from site to site the grappler would actually grab this little cable that you see here pick the trailer up by it and that's how they would load the trailer and then offload the trailer. Once it got to the job site, the grappler would grab this, set it behind the truck, hook it up, and then run the bunks up and then load the trailer and the tra truck would go away. But for right now, I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to start talking about the truck here a little bit first. Um, truck is pretty much out of the box, except for a few exceptions, of course. The last, from about where these mud flaps are, the mud guards about maybe a quarter inch behind them. From here back is all added on. There's probably an inch and a half, almost two inches added on from like right here back. I just realized my tag axle was loose. All right, back again. Put some glue on there quick just so it's not sitting hanging off to one side. Um, anyhow, the back frame from about here, here back has been added on. Just to lengthen the frame out to add the tag axle on the back just for the extra heavy loads. The bunk houses or the bunks, not bunk house, the bunks, these are all, like I say, scratch or built out of evergreen plastic. Square tubing, round tubing, notch the edges down to give them a little more of a defined point to load the logs into it. This is all built out of plastic tubing and such. I did it to where I could take these off for when I take it from show to show. This little disc is a back backing plate off of a i think a plymouth duster model kit then it's got a piece of steel rod coming up out that the bunk would twist and ride on this one's stationary i don't have this one to where it folds down because on the truck it'd be pretty much up all the time anyway and um this is all metal or aluminum you can kind of see through the it's all metal um aluminum deck plating mesh whatever you want to call it um, the, this is going to be kind of hard to do, but we're going to try to make it work. <laughs> the rear axle on here, the tag axle, is a front axle off of a Peterbilt 359. That's got springs that are cut in half, so it just, you know, goes up and down by airbag. But the, I, I built it to where these would be a steerable axle. That way, when, you're, when it's turning corners, this axle would actually turn with, the, with you know, turn with it instead of binding it up and dragging across the pavement. So I made it into a steerable tag axle. 
It's got a pencil hitch on the back. That's what the trailer hooks to. And these would be the safety chains for hooking to the, tying to the trailer. The uh, mud guard brackets. These are um, just pieces of rectangular plastic, the evergreen plastic. I cut them from lower corner to upper corner in kind of a diagonal fashion. To, so both of these pieces came off with one piece of plastic that was two inches long. And I cut it diagonally through the piece till I got two pieces. Then I rounded off the top of it to give it the to give it the mud guard, the hangers, whatever you want to call it. Mud guards themselves are the tickets that I use at work. They're pieces of plastic. This is one right here. This is pieces of plastic, but they're really thin and pliable. And I use these for these are this one I use for mud guards because when they, when you build them or use them, the mud guards hang like normal mud guards. That when you Looking at this from the top, you can kind of see the the curvature of the mud flap, how it's curved, kind of cupped. And then when you, on one of my, my Peterbilt truck that I got, they're actually bent back like they would bend over, you know, long distance hauls where the wind would constantly be pushing them back. It'd give them a little bit of a backward cup to them. But I like the fact, too, they're pliable. You put them in a box to take them somewhere to, to a show or whatever. You bump these they don't they don't snap off like the kit pieces would the hard plastic kit pieces would so it's nice having a little bit more of a pliable you know flexible plastic on there um i'll get to this the rest of this here in a minute uh front end the truck came with a turbo engine in it but the instructions say to not put the turbo on it well i wanted a turbo unit in it so i ended up putting that on and then this is all the air tube coming in off the air, to air box is all pieces of just plastic and a uh, shrink tubing. It's got the hydraulic tank on it here for when the, if you put like a grappler, you know, a portable grappler on here to where you can load your own trailer. I just put these on there just to kind of give it the extra detail of it. Um, pieces of copper. I don't know what they ever came off, but they're really small pieces of copper that I use for the fuel caps. Um, try to spin this here. Here you can see the turbo. This tube is just a piece of plastic tube, and I heat it up, bend it in a U-shape, and then this is, like I say, a piece of shrink tubing that you'd use for, like, electrical connections to seal your electrical connections on your car. I just heated it to the tubing and then stuffed it into the firewall just to make it look like the air and take them off the air, air cleaner. Um, got a hitch on the front so you can pull, pull whatever about while you're backing up, what have you. I did eliminate the, uh, muffler that was supposed to be on this kit. There's supposed to be a muffler that would hang right here like a box. And the exhaust would come out and dump out the back. Well, I like the idea of having a stack on there. So I eliminated the muffler box. And ran an exhaust off, or ran, ran the exhaust off the engine. And brought it back. You can kind of see it up in there. But I ran it back to the um, actual stack and then ran the stack up. And then this is a piece of evergreen tubing on the tip just to simulate the tip. Now, before I get into the trailer, I'm going to kind of jump ahead here a little bit. When I traded this truck, and as I was building it, I was posting it on pictures online, showing it off a little bit. The guy that traded the truck to me saw what I was doing with it. And at, as I got to the end, I was having a bear of a time. I was trying to bend, make this headache rack. And I could not, for the life of me, get each side to evenly match. And I was getting pretty tired of it. So I started looking around for a headache rack out, out of the AMT logger trailer. Couldn't find one. And he asked me, what are you doing with it? I'm like, well, I'm putting it on that truck that I got from you. He goes, would you mind if I tinkered around with it? I'm like, ah, sure, knock your socks off. So what he did is he took it around with it, and about a week and a half later, a box shows, shows up in the mail with this headache rack in the box. Whoa, hello. Anyway, I opened up the box, and I, I was like, what? And got to looking at it, and he supplied the two little pieces of angle here and then the tread plate for the bottom to mount it all to to sit it to the frame. But I was like, oh, wow, that is just cool. But I mean, it's just kind of nice to have the full circle, you know, here. I mean, here he traded me the truck and then here he built and sent me the last piece that I needed to put on the truck 
So it kind of brought it all, tied it together, and brought it all full circle. Just kind of a cool little quinky dink, I guess. But uh, I'm going to push this out of the way here in a minute, or for a minute. And then I'm going to bring out the uh, trailer. I do have tree branches cut that I use for an actual load. Oh, here, I'm going to leave this out for a minute. I gotta, I'm going to use it for something in a minute here. Hello. All right, we're going to leave the sit back drop though, out of the way for a minute. We'll do it that way. Hopefully you can see this okay without it being too much. Now this is the trailer. Like I say, the backbone is mostly articulating. The bunkhouse spins. These arms do come up. That way you can put the load on it. The uh, backbone of the trailer is, um, what do you call it? I don't know what you want to call it. It articulates. Pistons, whatever you want to call it. This is so when you have like long logs, you can bring the trailer, you'll bring the trailer all the way to the back of the snout. For shorter logs, you can run the trailer in, which would bring your bunk bunks closer to one another. This front snout or the front draw bar on here, this is a piece of brass. What this is for is when the logs are on the trailer, you cannot, the logs won't compress or give to allow the trailer to make a corner and being that this center point, this center point, and your pivot point off your pinnel hitch are, are three different angles and three different, you know, you know, hinge points. You've got to have the draw bar give some. So what they do is they have a hydraulic setup in the, 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 the draw bar up here that when you turn a corner and it puts pressure and binds up on the draw bar, this draw bar actually pistons in and out of the, the backbone of the trailer like this. And that would allow it to piston and oops and move and articulate with the the trailer as you or with the load as you turn when you're running empty it don't matter because this is just back there for along for the ride like a common semi trailer would be but you need to you know, have some form of give point so they put that they, they design that to where this pistons and gives that's for your when you turn and such um i added this little band around here i don't know if you can see it too well I added that little band around here just to kind of stop it from going too far back. That's just the stop on there. Um, let's see. This is, like I say, the bunk here. Drilled it and pinned so that these will actually fold down when not in use. That way when the trailer's set up on truck, top of the truck, these aren't sitting way above the truck to get taken out when you're trucking down the road. I added the truss bar to it just to strengthen it up, being that the trailer poles when the poles and twist gets a lot of torque and a lot of stress on that so added the, the uh, reinforcement truss to it and these are actually the actual 3m reflecting reflective uh markers on it if i can hit it with a little flashlight you can see it's actually reflect same with the ones on the side here and um same thing as on this truck this is all evergreen plastic tubing you can see through the sides, see through the ends. Again, this is a Plymouth Duster or Dodge, whatever you want to call it, backing plate, just to give it some weight up, a center point to hinge on. Piece of steel rod up to give a hinge point that way it's a little bit more, a little stronger than plastic. Same thing on this, the whole tail light, bar, mud flap, bracket, all this is all scratch, scratched out of. Uh, this is just a piece of flat plastic here and here. The mud flap guards, these are just pieces of plastic, like I say, the rectangular evergreen plastic whittled down and shaped out. And you can kind of see how these mud flaps are kind of cupping back, they're rolling on the outside, kind of rolling back. Again, that's why I like using that stuff, it just gives it that natural look of a poly type uh, mud flap. Plus two, and like I say, when you hit them, they don't break off like a plastic one would and again the axles springs this is i forget what i took this off i think it's off the dot Lindbergh dodge trailer i think i forget what it came off of but this is all the axles and springs are about the end in the air tank here about the only thing that aren't made out of evergreen airlines on here these are just uh for those of you that work in a factory, work in uh, loud noises where you have to wear hearing protection, 
the earplugs that have the rubberized cords on them. That's what these are. They're just cut down and glued into the air bellows. But I use those a lot for the airlines because they're about to scale for what the truck is. And then this, this would be your airlines that come up to the trailer or the back of the tractor. These brackets just kind of float and that one's all messed up. There. But these just kind of float in place. I know it's in the wrong spot. I wonder. I'll go back here. And then when you put it on the trailer, you just get out and grab the bracket and pull all these back to get them back toward the trailer and that way they're out of the way. Just for transport. I'm gonna try to, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pull this up, but I'm gonna, I don't have a whole lot of room on my table here. Bring that forward, I'm gonna hook this up and I'm gonna grab the logs quick just to kind of show you what it looks like with logs and everything. I'll take the camera off the tripod maybe and do that. Hold on one second. All right, and that's what the truck looks like with the logs with the load on it. Like I say, I'm, I can't do it with the camera in my hand, but when this truck, when the trailer would, truck would turn, turn, this draw bar, being that this is mounted where it is, the back of the truck would wanna, is going to want to swing or pendulum out. And then when it, when it reaches its widest point in the turn, that draw bar actually gets longer and stretches itself out. When it comes back in line, it compresses and then it, you know, gets a little closer to the, or shorter. That's why you need the articulation of that, that draw bar to do what it does. But these are just tree branches cut up to simulate logs. I want to make some tags, colored tags to nail, like tack to the back of the log like they've been inspected ready for transport. I do have some black cable that I use for uh, like a hold down. A lot of times if you're going on a short run from yard to yard or you know yard to drop off point to the mill or wherever, a lot of times if these guys are only doing like a 5-10 mile run, a lot of times they don't even cable them down, they just go. Always safe to tie them down some way, form or fashion, because you never know if they're slip forward, slide forward on you. But that's my auto car. Like I say, it's a DC 9964B model. Auto car dump truck. Started out life as. And I converted it into a logger. The wheels, the front, the wheels on the tag here, I think they came off of the... I forget what they came They either came off the Dodge or they're out of the auto car. I'm not sure. I want to say they came off the front wheels of the Dodge... Limburg Dodge truck. That's what the wheels of the back are. But yeah, that's it. I just wanted to show one of my 18 wheelers tonight. Well, actually, a 20 wheeler here. But next time I'll pull my uh, Peterbilt 359 out. I got that done up in TMC livery. And we'll uh, show that one off here in a, another week or two. But uh, thanks for watching. Hope you all are having a good night. If you haven't done so already, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell up top to let you know when future videos come out. And have a good night. We'll holler at you later. See you on the corner. Take care. Bye-bye.